Hello. Yes, it works. Excellent. So, um, like I said, my name is Stephen. Um, I'm a, actually, I'm a first year maths student at the University of Warwick in the UK. And in my spare time, I'm a, both a developer and a moderator on portableapps.com. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to our platform. You might have heard of us because um, we won the SourceForge best project of the year last year. And I suspect a number of you use our software to get around whatever crazy limitations your administrator puts on your PC wherever you work. So uh, before I get started, what is a portable app? Um, it might not be what you think. Um, I'm not at the moment talking about a program that runs on both Windows and Linux and Mac, or one that runs on x86 or ARM or MIPS. I'm talking about one that runs, uh, that you install onto some mass storage device. And as you take it between PCs, it keeps its settings and your bookmarks in the case of a web browser and allows you to take them basically wherever you work. And even, even if your device changes drive letter on Windows, for example, um, that it's going to keep going. And also that it's not going to leave files and folders and registry entries basically everywhere you go so that you just leave a mess everywhere. Um, PortableApps.com, uh, we were originally founded in 2005 by our developer lead, John T. Haller uh, from New York. Although before that, we actually existed on the Mozilla Zine forums. There were a few of us hanging about. Um, and we actually started with a portable version of Firefox, um, which is still easily our most popular app. Although currently we have about 90, 90 programs of both open source and freeware in our directory. Um, and that's actually expanding all the time. We've got, um, we've had over 100 million downloads um, with an, a rough three to five million users worldwide. It's, it's hard to get a sure number on that, but we've actually got over 100,000 registered users on our forums. Um, but our main focus really is is the platform, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, we've recently expanded into freeware as well, so you know this being FOSDEM, it is the free and open source. So we we do freeware, and we're probably quite unusual here in the fact that our main platform is Windows, but we actually fully support Wine as well. Um, if you've got any Linux developers who would like to help us become more platform neutral, I'd love to talk to you at the end, and I'm sure we can sort something out. So the platform, we have four, four components, uh, the menu, the format, the installer, and the actual launchers themselves. And I'm going to give you a brief, brief run of each of those. Uh, the platform, ooh, words are on the bottom. Um, so the platform, the menu rather, is probably the least interesting part to you guys, um, but it's actually what the users see most of the time. Um, you can see a, a screenshot of version 1.6, which was released last week on the right-hand side. We've got a couple of applications pinned to the top. Uh, Firefox and Thunderbird and OpenOffice, uh, Pigeon, we do Inkscape and things like that as well. Uh, it's got built-in functions for adding and removing applications, backing up data using the, the format, which I'll talk about in a minute. Integrates fully with the installer. Uh, themes, there's actually quite a thrive. Fri there's a big theme community as well. Um, and a huge localization attempt. We, we're currently in 51 languages for the menu, so basically whatever you speak, you can probably have it in your language. Um, like I said, 1.6 was released last week. Uh, we've got 2.0 already in beta testing, and we're hoping um, that should incorporate um, an updater similar to apt, so you can, you can grab new apps from the website and, and update the ones you've already got uh, completely painlessly. So the format is kind of the main, main way that it all works on the top level. Uh, so this is in bold, so you'd replace this with an emulator program. In the case of Firefox, we've got Firefox Portable. Uh, in the top level directory, you have a launcher, which I'll talk about in a minute, and a help file. And then all our, all our applications are split into these three folders. App is where app, you've got app info, which literally has a couple of files that I'll also talk about. And they describe your program so that the menu can show it up properly. And they describe the installer so the installer generator can create it properly. Uh, app name. Uh, in the case of Firefox, it's Firefox. The key uh, with this is that it's an exact binary copy of your normal installation. So we've actually got an exact copy of Firefox in there or an exact copy of Thunderbird. The idea being that when you update your program, if, if the portable version isn't updated at the same time for whatever reason, the users can literally grab your, your normal installed version, uh, extract it, drop it straight in there. And as long as you haven't made too many changes to your program in the way it saves its settings, it should work no problem at all. Uh, default data being in an oval is optional. Um, for example, with uh, Firefox, Firefox does require a profile to be there when it's run. 
but the data folder, when we package stuff up in the install of the data folder, is left intentionally empty, so it doesn't overwrite anything of the users. Um, so basically, your launcher on first run checks to see if there's anything in the data directory, and if there's not, it copies it straight over from the default data. Um, as I mentioned, data is normally, uh, is when you package stuff up in the installer, is completely empty, because overwriting user settings is never, ever a good thing. I'll hate you. Um, and then the other folder, which kind of is just other, really. There's help file, and because we're GPL, we've got source and stuff like that in there. Just odd bits and pieces that don't really fit anywhere else. The installer. The installer's quite nice in that you get it for free once you're in the format. Um, once you're in the format, you can run the installer creator, and it'll create your installer. Um, it's for all open source and freeware at the moment, because it's GPL with exception. And if you contact us, um, be used commercially as well. The idea being that um, you can sit down there, it automatically searches for the platform when you run the installer, so it fills in the right directory for the user, so they have as little to do as possible. And we're actually built on Ensys, the in installer language Ensys, um, by Nullsoft, the people behind Winamp. And the idea behind that is that actually it gives us an incredibly small footprint in the order of kilobytes and allows us to be, have customizations in there like um, optional components and things like that. The installer is actually more widely translated than the menu with 58 languages. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, here we go. So appinfo.ini and installer.ini are basically the two files that describe, describe your program to the platform. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see a copy of the appinfo.ini file from the program I work on, Toucan. Um, and appinfo.ini literally describes to the menu your program. It tells it what version for the updater, um, your home page, so people can easily visit that, a brief description, and various odds and ends like that. Um, for example, if your program has multiple multiple Xs, you can get them all to show up in the menu if you want, or only one or two of them, uh, with various icons as well. So that, that basically describes that, and also language, so that when you run your program from the menu, you can have it start in the correct language. Um, installer.ini is basically exactly the same, except it describes stuff for the installer, so specifying optional components and languages. Uh, there's not really a lot of point having your installer translated into a random language if your user that then runs the program and finds it's not actually in their language at all. It's kind of off-putting for everyone um, and makes people unhappy. The launcher. The launcher is kind of the main focus of the platform. And at the moment, it's the most variable part. So the launcher is what makes your app run in a portable fashion. And because all programs are different, they obviously vary an awful lot. Um, so for example, if you've got a program that's been designed to run in a portable fashion, you'll find that actually all you need to do is run it and then exit and everything carries on all right. Um, in, the case, in some other programs, for example, you might have to tidy up registry entries after the program is finished or tidy up settings, move them, to, move them to the USB drive if they're saved automatically on the local PC, stuff like that. Um, we also write these in Ensys. You can see a short, a short section from the, from the Firefox one there. It's one, probably one of our most, more, complex, more complex examples. Although, actually, in the last sort of week or so, um, we've taken a very similar, similarly to the way the installer and the platform are specified with the ini files. Um, we've now actually got a universal launcher that's currently in alpha testing. The idea being you fill in another file that basically says, my program writes to the registry here, here, and here, and it saves its settings here and there, and it'll basically create a launcher for you that, that tidies it all up afterwards. The idea being that by reducing the number of launchers we've got, we can, we can clamp down on bugs, basically. Um, so that's, that's kind of that. Um, Ensys, again, is used because it's got a really small overhead. The main problem with Ensys is that it isn't cross-platform, and you know, that is something that is actively being looked at because it is a problem. Um, you probably all, you're probably all working on some apps that you might have a Windows build. Um, if you did, it would be good. There's a number of changes you can actually make to make your app run in a more portable fashion. By accepting a command line or an environment variable, just something that says, please save your user settings here, then that is basically the number one thing you can do to make to make portable apps users happy. Um, by by taking say a command line vari a command line path, you can say your launcher will then pass it the correct path, the correct location. Your program will save it, 
and your users won't and it won't then have to copy your your files across when your program is finished running um, which is good um, making the registry optional if you're very windows focused or if you have a windows port is good uh, if you use Qt or wx widgets there's specific ways of doing config files um, it'll manage those automatically for you without any problems um, basically using the using the path that you've been passed in and stuff and if possible with your language reduce the number of requirements linking statically if you use c++ is also good because you know dll hell is a big problem still um, also stuff like uh, making sure your program is friendly after being put through a compressor like upx can make a big difference um, drives unfortunately although flash memory is still very cheap you do have users who do try and fit as much as they possibly can on the 32 megabyte stick they got free some years ago and the more apps they can fit on there the better uh, so we do use things like upx to compress exes um, if your if your program is friendly that way it's it's also good um, i'm kind of at the end to be honest um, if you've got any questions i'm going to be here uh, most of the rest of the weekend the forum is a great place like i say we've got about 100,000 registered users of which, a lot, of which there's a fair proportion of people who have actually written launches themselves programs. So there's a lot of knowledge out there. Um, we have a pretty active IRC channel as well. There's always people to talk to on there. Um, and that's about it. So if there's any questions, um, I'll either take them now or I'll be down there afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>